Ian, you seem like a confident guy. Where does that confidence come from? You know, growing up, I would have played a, you know, a lot of different sports, uh, like Gaelic and uh, rugby, obviously, and uh, golf. And I would have played a huge amount of tennis. And you know, being a kind of one-on-one -on -one sport, it's you know very mental, and you kind of have to show an, an external confidence. You know, when you're playing, coming up, coming up against an opponent. So I would have got a lot of it from that, and um, from playing like in a team sport now in a pivot position like out half, I know that a, a lot of the, the players would, would look to me, you know, in, in a time of need when, when things aren't going great and, um, you know, if you can stand tall and um, call plays confidently, you know, they'll feed off that. You said you played a lot of sports growing up. Was it rugby players that you looked up to or was there people from other sports that you aspired to be like? Ah, like any kid, you know, like soccer was, and um, I would have been a big fan of uh, Gaelic football, even like the top golfers, top tennis players. I remember loving, you know, Andre Agassi or uh, Carlos Spencer, like generally kind of mavericks of, of their sport. I know you lost our cook off to Fergus McFadden. Have you been, have you been working on, on that cooking since? Uh, how, how are you in the kitchen? Um, I'm okay, like myself and my, uh, my roommate, uh, Dara Fitzpatrick, we, we generally cook two or three times a week, but it'd be simple enough stuff like fajitas or burritos or you know, spaghetti bolognese. It's, Nothing overly complicated. Just you've achieved a lot in the last uh, year or two and, and in your career so far. What, what are your kind of ambitions in the short term and the long term in the next kind of four or five years in your rugby career? Thanks. Um, yeah, just, you know, my, my, my focus is, is very short term, you know, it's very much game by game. And um, with, with Jimmy Gofford coming in, uh, you know, very, you know, big competition on my hands there. And, um, just trying to secure that, that, that starting spot with Leinster and um, you know if I get that it's about winning games with Leinster and um, you know if, if, if that comes I'd like to think international honours will, will follow. You shocked the, the rugby world and, and your, your Harris fan club as well uh, towards the end of last season by, by shaving off your, your, your curly locks. What was the, behind that decision and it looks like they're on their way back. Um, oh, well yeah it was just Changed things up a small bit. Um, there's a bit of a sm small story behind. We were playing crazy golf, and um, obviously I was getting a good bit of sagging over my hair. And um, usually we play for a forfeit, and the, the forfeit was uh, whoever lost had to get my hair cut, and if I lost, I had to shave my head. Um, and unfortunately, I lost, so I had to shave my head, but it was no harm, I think. As someone who was a was the up and coming golfer, as you mentioned earlier, that must be particularly hard to take. <laughs> um, yeah, it was certainly a bit of a blow to the ego, all right. Thank you.